You know what a polychord is, people? You ever heard that term? You ever heard the term pedal tone? You know what a polychord and a pedal tone is? A polychord is when you play a major chord or, or just any chord, really, and then you put a different bass note in it, like in this case, C. But then I played an F in the bass. And here's a D chord, right? What if I put a G in the bass? What if I put an E in the bass? Here's an E chord. What if I put an A in the bass? Polychord. And a pedal tone is when you play one note. D, right? And you start changing chords over that note. And as soon as you start doing that, everyone says, wow, Pete Townsend. Like he was the first person to ever think of that. Yes, he made it popular, but but he he definitely was not the first guy to think of that. So yeah, pedal tone, same bass note. Remember that episode I showed you, The Secret, where there's basically only three triads? Take any of those and move it anywhere over the open string. Just blindly s stab. And it sounds like cashmere. So that's pedal tone. Same bass note, moving chords. Like if I play a G chord. And then I play a C chord over G. pedal tone. Okay, hi guys. It's Larry. Uncle Larry, you may know me as. Episode 245. Holy shit. Homeschool and product. Um, hope everybody's doing great. Man, chill week for Larry. I only got one session this week. That's tomorrow. And that's really rare. So, you know, when that used to happen in the old days, I would have thoughts like, oh man, my career's over. But uh, when at this age, when that happens, I am like, hell yes. Because I've tried to kill my career over and over, and it won't die. I've tried. I've desperately tried. And I'm, I trust the fact that uh, if, I, if my hands still work at age 75, I'll still be doing sessions now. Uh, it won't be that great, probably, but I'll still be doing it. Hey, man. Uh... Remember these? Man, many, many thoughts come into my mind when I see one of these. Lots of memories. Not just because it's called a memory man. Uh, the only delay pedal that's harder to keep running than a real tape echo. But boy, they sound good when they work. I went to XTS yesterday. Uh, Barry, my dear friend that does all the pedal boards for all the stars in Nashville. Exact Tone Solutions, look them up. Barry is my, not only my pedal board guy, but he's also my counselor. Very intelligent man, uh, great conversationalist, deep thinker. I wonder what Barry's IQ is. Barry, have you ever had your IQ tested? Smart kid, uh, man, very thoughtful man. Uh, reminds me of what I could have done with my life had I not devoted my entire life to chasing booze and whores um just kidding that's a joke that's a joke but barry's a very clean man he's 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 like the alternate version of me had i not been naughty all those years very clean man anyway we were in there he was helping me put my new board together i'm very excited about this little new board i got going here uh lots of new twists so anybody out there that has an Uncle Larry board, uh, you're going to have to buy some new shit um, if you want to keep up. I'll show it to you later. Um, 
Here's, I got lots of stuff in the VCB. I feel like it's a slave over a hot slab of VCB for you. Um, the, the Memory Man, you know, great pedal, although the delays don't get very long. Here's, here's maximum delay time, okay? Check it out. That's all you get. That sounds about like 400, 450, somewhere in that range. But sure is glorious. I bought this yesterday at uh, Ryan Nixon's place. You know that guy with the crazy pedals that I showed you where we did the um, Uncle Larry's hearing test? Hey, Ryan, thanks for, thanks for selling me this cool pedal. It actually works, and there's no clock noise, which these are known for. But, you know, the, the big question with the Memory Man is do you use it in chorus mode or vibrato mode? That's the big question. Here's chorus mode. Here's vibrato mode. And here's chorus. Which one do you like better? I'll turn it down a little bit. That's chorus. Here's vibrato. Either way, you can't lose. It sounds fucking amazing. All right, let's get to some hot VCB. Uh, hey, Tom, the Evo verb kicks ass. Yes, it does. If you guys are still debating whether or not you should buy one of those, just do it, for God's sakes. I know it's expensive, but you'll never regret buying one. They're amazing. Everybody I know who has bought one of those is like, thank God you turned me on to this. Um, they're outstanding. I mean, there's only a couple effects really in the end. Overdrive, delay, reverb, maybe tremolo. And if you don't have really good examples of all that shit, what are you doing? If you want spring reverb, get the best. Just get it. I'm not just saying that because he's one of my best pals. Believe me. If I didn't love that that box, I wouldn't be hawking it. Which reminds me, some guy said yesterday, oh, great business model, you know, buy a couple guitars and say they're amazing and then sell them. Look, fuck off. Uh, I don't have to offer these guitars to you guys. Uh, uh, I can easily sell them privately if you want me to. If it feels like uh, I buy and sell a lot of guitars, okay? It's no secret. I've told you that from the beginning. I flip guitars like like a lot of people flip houses. And uh, if you want me to tell you about them, I'll tell you. If you don't want me to tell you, I won't tell you. But uh, the guy said, yeah, uh, great business model. I, I could uh, uh, buy a couple guitars, say they're amazing, and then sell them. He said, too bad I'm in Europe or I would have bought a couple. You know, it's like, dude, fuck off, first of all. Um, and secondly, the whole point of this channel is is guitar lessons. I'm not trying to get rich. I don't make any money on any of this shit. I sell you guys this shit for basically what I paid for it. Minus the repairs, of course. So fuck off for the third time. Okay, um... Let's see, Buy a lot of VCB shit. Uh, hey Tom, do you like to play loud? You know, no, I don't. My 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 ears are so fucked up from years of, of abuse, um, terrible ringing, tinnitus. Um, there have been a couple of those Ursa gigs where I walked off the stage at the end of the night just going, God, it's so loud. It's not my. I turn my amps, you know to the point where you can hear them and no more. Um, I don't use earplugs or ear monitors. Uh, my whole motto has always been wedges or death. Um, I mean, I, I, I just turn the amp up to where you can hear it real nice, good fat tone, and then there's no more extra. I like to get a monitor mix, wedge mix, where you can hear the whole band. I put a lot of drums in there, vocals, uh, keyboards, on the Ursa gig, Kenny Wayne's good and loud, man. He's over there on the other side of the stage, and he, he plays real loud. And it's great, it's great, you know, but I don't even have to get him in my wedge because he's, he, you can hear him all the way over on the other side of the stage. See, I don't play nearly that loud, but I'm also not a blues rock icon, you know. Kenny's awesome. 
but he should play loud. He, you know, he comes from that school where that's what those guys do. You know, that's that's totally his style. But you know, I like to just get a nice. I like to be in the mix. You know, we there was this guy standing on the side of the stage, this famous lawyer guy who who's been a rock and roll lawyer forever. And we were doing a sound check for the Farm Aid gig, and I said, I said, come out here, man, come out here. And I had him stand right where I was standing. And we played a couple songs, blazing through these, those old hard songs. And he was laughing, man, he thought it was awesome. And he was like, wow, man, it's, I've never really been on a stage where I can really hear like what it really sounds like. I've always been out in the crowd. Powerful. I like to get it sounding really powerful where I'm standing. You know, a nice full mix of everything, you know. Um, another guy said, uh, what, what do you think about guitarists that undulate when they play? You know, that whole thing where people shake the guitar. I'd have a lot of, I have a lot of friends that do that. Um, I never really thought about it one way or the other. I personally wouldn't do that because I like to get, I don't like to bend necks on guitars. You know, I don't really think that's very, you know, that's not my style. I got, that's why the good Lord invented the Bigsby. And I have, a, I also use a lot of finger vibrato. If I, I'll vibrato whole chords, you know. You don't have to bend the neck to do that, you know. But a lot of guys do that. That's like a whole thing. It's cool, whatever. Uh, um, I have no opinion. If you're asking me, I have no opinion. Uh, hey, Tom, what drummers have the best feel of all time? Well, you, you know I'm a frustrated drummer. I can't play drums for shit, but I love drums. And I love drummers. Me and Danny Dugmore always sit around and talk about how much we wish we were drummers. We watch drum videos on YouTube. Fascinated with great drummers, okay? We've got lots of friends who are fantastic drummers. We're so spoiled in this town. There's so many great players here. When you, when I, uh, when I get, when I, ha every once in a while I have to play with a drummer who's not very good on a particular session. And uh, man, it is frustrating for me because I'm so spoiled getting to play with all these amazing drummers, man. You know, just these people in this town do not fuck around at all. I mean, there's bad cats, man, that just play take after take after take of flawless performances. There's never going to be an out of time note. There's never going to be a, a moment where they rush or drag something to the point where, you know, it does not happen. But when you get with some of these band guys, man, they, they don't, they, they're not studio guys, you know, and, and, uh, Lord Jesus, you got to beat on them. Um, but that doesn't happen very often, but it does once in a while. See, people like to call me in to be like the only session guy in a, in a band context. And I do that a lot, right? And it's always a little delicate because they don't really want you there. The producer might want you there, but the band guys don't. So I go, I go into those situations very carefully, very, very tenderly, you know. I realize they don't want me there. I try not to overstep many. I try to keep it all in my lane, you know. But it works. And uh, I usually, after the first couple songs, they're like, okay, dude, you can be with us. It's cool. I'm not a threat to any guitar players. I don't. I'm, I'm not a competitive guy. I, 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 I do whatever I can to help that guitar player look great. I'll help them get their sound. I'll play something that works around what they're doing to make them sound even better. I have, I have zero ego. I've got ego about a couple things in life, but that is not one of them. Let's think. What do I have ego about? Um, I'm pretty good at Madden football. I've been whipping Marshall's ass Madden football on, on Xbox. He's getting pissed. Speaking of Marshall, the other night I'm sitting here on the computer and he's in this little room down there playing guitar. He likes to close the door and just crank up and play. My God, both of my sons, and I'm not just saying this because I'm their dad, but they are such natural musicians. Marshall's in there, just I can hear him experimenting, playing, trying different chords. He's such a natural. Whether he sticks with this or not, I don't know, but the boy was grown in a test tube to be a guitar player. I mean, with his mother's ear and, uh, and whatever help I've given him genetically. I mean, it's amazing to just sit and listen to him experiment. He's, got, he's very adventurous. Like, he'll get on these little chord things where he's trying all these different chords. And, 
It's really cool to hear him. He's natural rhythm. It's fantastic. He's only 10 years old, and he's already tried all this stuff that I never even considered when I was 10. He's got a long way to go. He's got 10 years of hard work in front of him, but he is such a natural. It's really cool. And I'm not going to get mad if he chooses not to play. I'm not one of those dads. Like, it'd be great for me if he played, of course, but I don't care. Uh, he, if he wants to do it, great. But don't do it for me, I told him. You know, do it for yourself. Uh, Tommy, who is the most original guitar player of all time? Uh, totally original guitar player? Alan Holdsworth. Um, no one even comes close. Alan Holdsworth is the only guitar player that sounds like he's never heard anyone else ever play a guitar. None of his playing has anything to do with what anybody before him has done. Love him or hate him. Uh, a lot of people out there are not into that shit, and I get it. Um, I even played that for Marshall the other day. I said, check this dude out. I played him some live shit from like 84, 85. He's like, wow, Dad, that's really amazing. And uh, I don't think he really felt it. He's into Skinner right now. We played we played some old Skinner jams on the way to school this morning. He was loving that. But, but Holdsworth is outrageous to think that anybody could ever come up with that concept of how to play guitar. I mean... Yes, there have been some pioneers, but most of the pioneers, like Eddie and Jimmy Page, are also rip-off artists. They they took what was before them and they, they turned it into their own thing. Alan Holdsworth, what the what did he steal from? When he plays, it's like, wow, it's like some alien came to Earth and and, and just invented a way to play guitar that has nothing to do with anything that came before. I saw him live in a club a couple of times when I was a young man, mind boggling. I mean, you know, when you see somebody playing all that shit, sometimes you wonder, you know, are they, are they jiving? You know, all this, these crazy scales and outside runs, is he just playing whatever note he wants to play or is he really hearing that? And I think in Alan Holdsworth's case, some of these jazz cats I think are, are jiving a little bit but Alan Holdsworth is not jiving. When he plays those crazy runs and stuff, every one of those notes is something he knew was coming. His knowledge of chords is outrageous, man. I mean, voicings that, that don't even exist on a guitar, he's doing it. It's unbelievable. I'm an absolute guitar tourist compared to that guy. I feel like that's why I never get an ego about any of this shit because, yeah, you know, I can play guitar. You know, I feel like I've done some good shit in my life. But when you compare him to something like that, it's like, okay, well, he's also playing a guitar, but that's nothing I ever thought of. He's amazing. That's I Also, Eddie always said that I was his favorite guitar player, and of course it is. Anyway, back to drummers. Um, what drummers have the best feel of all time? See, I'm very concerned about the way a drummer's pocket feels, Okay. Bonzo, of course, there's just something innately magical about his pocket. When Everybody can play what he played. It's not technically that difficult, but to make it feel the way he made it feel is what's magical. And it's not perfect. It's not gridded. You can look at it on a, on a, on a grid and you can could, you could see it's not perfect. But it's where he placed each individual note of what his four limbs are doing that makes it feel like Bonzo. You know, Jimmy Gordon is another one of my favorite drummers. I love everything Jimmy Gordon ever played. I just think his pocket and his feel is outrageous. Um, there's been a lot of great drummers. Uh, Phil Collins is, is the most underrated drummer of all time. I mean, people think of Phil Collins as a pop star. In my mind, he's a prog drummer. His feel is incredible. I mean, listen to some of this shit on Duke, Genesis Duke. Listen to the man of our times. Fucking listen to that shit. Phil Collins is the baddest cat ever. I mean, Teddy Boy doesn't like him, but Teddy Boy can fuck off. Um, so, uh, you know, it's funny. There's like this new breed. I, wa I watch a lot of drum videos on, on, on YouTube. And there's this like new breed of like these really chopsy drummers, you know. There's lots of cats with incredible chops, you know, but like there's this one guy who always puts up the shorts, you know, on, on the UT. He's got an unbelievable facility, chops, you know. 
but he has no feel. Like he tries to play a Zeppelin groove and it doesn't feel like anything. It blows my mind that someone can have that many chops and zero feel. Um, what is this? What is this phenomenon? The guitar players like that too. Tons of chops, no feel. I would rather have all the feel and no chops. You know, that's, uh, this blows my mind that people can't tell that what they're playing doesn't feel good. I don't understand it. Maybe that's a, maybe that's a product of, of YouTube. Maybe that's a product of uh, people have too much insight into watching technical shit and they, they're studying all the wrong things. You know, they're studying chops, but they're not studying the emotion of what makes something feel good. I don't know. Anyway, uh, lots of fun answers to the iconic iconic band artists that, that everyone in the world seems to love except you yesterday. Um, some pretty unusual answers, like a couple people even said Beatles. It's hard for me to get past that. I mean, I realize that we're all different. One man's trash is another man's treasure and all that shit. But... I don't understand how anybody couldn't like the Beatles. I just don't understand it. It doesn't compute to me. There was a lot of people that said Prince. There was a lot of people that said Queen. I can I can understand that. I love both Prince and Queen, but I can at least understand how somebody could say they don't like that. Uh, but the Beatles, how do you not like that? I just don't get it. But anyway, I'm old, and my opinion means nothing. But... You know, the, the most popular answers, I will say, uh, when I ask that question to a bunch of musicians, it, like I said yesterday, Doors is number one, U2 is way up there, Credence is way up there, Grateful Dead is way up there. You always hear that people say that, I just don't get the Grateful Dead. You know, I didn't really listen to much Dead until I got a bit older. Um, I'm, I'm not saying I love the Grateful Dead, but I... I put those records on and I'll just clean the house or whatever. It's it's feel good music, man. It's got a vibe. It's like putting on an old Western swing album or something. It's like, yeah, it's not my favorite record in all the time, but it puts me in a good mood, you know. How do you not enjoy listening to a Grateful Dead record just for the just for the vibe alone that it puts off, you know? Anyway, what makes the world amazing and also what makes it horrible is how different we all are. You know, but whatever. You know what mine is? My number one band that I don't get that everyone, everyone gets but me. I don't, don't tell anybody I said this. Cream. I don't, I don't like cream. I don't get that shit. I do not get that shit. Okay. Uh, hey, Tom, do you still have your burst? Yeah, of course I still have a burst. Um, Hey, Tom, uh, why was that 55 gold top you were playing in that video at Rumble Seat so much more expensive than the one you sold? Because it's a 55. You guys realize that, that since the Les Paul's inception in 1952, the model got more and more expensive as the years went on. And that's not because usually stuff that's older is more expensive, but in this case... The, the the 52 Les Paul was a very crude design. Uh, lots of issues. Lots of design problems. And as the 50s went on, they tweaked it, and it got better and better and better and better until they discontinued the model due to poor sales in 1960. So the 52 Les Paul was cool, had lots of design issues. 53, they, they went to the wraparound, which helped a little bit. 54, or late 54... Early 55, they went to, well, actually mid 55, I think. I'm not an expert on this, but they went to the separated stop tail and tunematic, which was a massive improvement over the wrap tail design. Now you've got adjustable intonation, um, you've got adjustable string tension. Nice. And then in 1957, they made another massive improvement by, by um, introducing the humbucker. PAF which stands for something. Anyway, um, what else we got here? Uh, so yeah, a 55 is more dough than a 52 because of its features, okay? 
People will pay a lot of extra money for a separated stop tail tunematic. That's what they like. And they should like it because it's great. Um, uh, anything else here? Um, do I talk too much on these videos? Some people have said, I preferred it back when you used to play a lot. And I, I feel like I still put a lot of videos up where I play. But you guys have heard me play so much shit. Uh, I hope you don't get bored with it, you know, because I'm only one man. I can only do so much, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? This is a special guitar. A totally chopped 1962 Epiphone Crestwood. Totally chopped. Not much left of its original uh, condition except the pickups and the pots. Um, coolest looking inlays ever. I mean, come on, look at those. Why didn't they use those more? It's got these hideous repro keys where the tuner buttons are way too white. Um, somebody added these pick guards. They're not supposed to be there. Well, the original had pick guards, but not these pick guards. This thing has more holes in it than the Blackburn Lancashire. And somebody put a plate over here to cover all the holes, which I think is fantastic. One day, I might put a Horseshoe Bigsby on this, which would be sick. I've got a sick old Horseshoe Bigsby. That would be really cool to put on this. Maybe I'll do that today. Check it out. I'm going to show you how, how the joy of a big jam distortion pedal. All right? This is clean. something buddy he's been putting these he must be extremely bored but he's been doing these weird edits where he he makes these little two or three minute videos where he edits a bunch of my shit together with all this weird looking sort of special effects it's really kind of fun uh buddy jolly is his name whoever you are out there dude you need to get a hobby first of all maybe get a girlfriend but I do appreciate these videos you're making. These are not condoned or sanctioned by the homeschooling uh, industry, but I do appreciate them. Um, he never sends me any rough cuts or anything. He just puts them up, which I think is pretty ballsy, but uh, it's really funny. Like he'll make a, he'll pick a theme and like he, he did one for Joe Walsh. So there's all these crazy edits of me playing with Joe Walsh and he did one for me playing with Ann Wilson. I'll post it. You look at all his videos. They're pretty fun. I'll put one up in the links, and then you can check it out if you're really bored, like he is. All right, guys. Have a great day. Uh, peace out. Uh, I wish today was Thursday, so there would be a game tonight. All right. Bye-bye.